Good morning, professors. It is my honor to attend this meeting. And my name is Bo Jia. I'm a doctor in the Department of Thoracic Medical Oncology, Peking University Cancer Hospital and Institute. And uh, my title is Prediction of the Virus Threat Test in First Line Therapy of Hemitrix Based Regimens for Advanced Lung Adenocarcinoma Patients. And this work uh, was published on Cancer Cell International in 2020. As we all know, lung cancer is the most common cancer worldwide, and most patients are diagnosed at an advanced stage. Although the progresses has been, have been made uh, in immunotherapy and targeted therapy, Chemotherapy remains the cornerstone for advanced non-small cell lung cancer patients. hematrix mm -hmm. based therapy has been the standard first-line chemotherapy regimen for advanced non-screamers, non-small cell lung cancer patients. As an anti-angiogenesis targeted drug, bevacizumab has been approved for the first-line treatment for these patients. However, some patients still show primary resistance to these treatment regimens and progress rapidly. It is unclear why these patients responded heterogeneously, and it is necessary to find a method to predict the efficacy and identify a subset of patients who might be resistant to chemotherapy. And these patients would have a chance to receive other treatment methods such as immunotherapy, target therapy, and other chemotherapy regimens. Where strat uh, is a blood based test can divide patients into uh, either good efficacy or poor efficacy groups. So it might potentially help oncologists onco onco make decisions in their clinical practice. Prior studies have shown that Verstrat is a was a valid method to predict the efficacy of target therapy for advanced lung adenocarcinoma patients. However, today there hasn't been study using this VS method for the prediction of first line hematrix based chemotherapy for Chinese advanced lung adenocarcinoma patients. And therefore. We conducted a study to explore whether VS could be used in the first line setting to identify the ones and the carcinoma patients who had better outcomes or resistance to pimetrix chemotherapy. Now let's see the materials and methods. We enrolled patients if they had stage 3B or 4 lung adenocarcinoma had no previous systemic anti-cancer therapy and had memorable lesions. All patients received chemotherapy or bevacizumab. And the primary endpoint end point was progression-free survival. Other endpoints included partial response and objective response rates. And we conducted the worst trend analysis uh, for 72 serum samples by Boyang company in Beijing, China. And this year's matrix assisted laser absorption analyzation time of blood mass spectrometry and has become a new type of self analyzing biomass spectrometry developed in recent years and is the most common used Frontier technology in protein omics research. This technique can be used to detect protein polypeptides, components in patient serum, and the molecular weight and content could be portrayed as protein peptides fingerprints. And protein poly 
tithes distributions very significantly in one's knowledge of customer patient zero. And this person products to be detected in different molecular weight ranges by using this technique. And eight characteristic pigs in the serum were found to be related to the efficacy of chemotherapy. And as shown in this figure, uh, the hit and area of characteristic pigs in the mice spectra of patients with good efficacy were lower, as shown in the uh, green pig. While well, those with poor efficacy were significantly higher as shown in red pig. According to the location, height, and area of characteristics pigs, data models were established to predict the efficacy. After comparing the sensitivity and specificity of different models, the very stress test was the model with the best sensitivity and specificity. Where threats could eventually discover and capture new specific protein features by comparing the differences in analysis, analysis between different case groups. And a very strict label of good or poor response was designed for each sample. So let's summarize uh, the brief procedure of these methods. First, we take samples of treatment and extraction, uh, extract the peptides. And the dif differential protein pigs were detected by this protein fingerprint. And we did the raw data processing. And uh, finally, we established the therapeutic effect prediction model. Let's see the results. As shown in this table, uh, of 72 patients, 60 patients were classified as very good, uh, and 12, 12 patients uh, were classified as uh, very poor. And very good uh, re uh, referred to the good efficacy uh, group. And uh, the VS poor referred to the uh, uh, the poor efficacy group, uh, and the patient's baseline characteristics were well balanced according to age, gender, ECOG performance status, stage, and smoking status. And uh, 29 patients in the West Good group and six patients in the West Pearl group received chemotherapy alone. And for patients received chemotherapy plus bevacizumab, uh, 31 patients in the uh, West Stress Goods group and six patients in the Pearl group. Uh, let's see the uh, response rates for these two groups. And the partial response uh, rate were higher in the VS good group than in the VS pro group. And uh, the subgroup analysis showed that uh, for, pa for patients received chemotherapy alone, no matter patients received chemotherapy alone or uh, chemotherapy plus biocizumab, uh, the PR rate uh, was higher uh, in the best good group than that in the best pro group. But uh, due to the small sample, uh, we didn't see a significant uh, statistical uh, significance. Uh, let's see the survival for these patients. And the median follow-up time for all patients was uh, 7.4 months. And as shown in this figure, the median uh, PFS uh, 
in the Westgood group was significantly improved uh, compared with that in the Westpool group. And uh, uh, median PFS uh, hasn't been reached, reached uh, in the Westgood group and uh, uh, median P PFS was uh, 4.2 months in the West Pearl group. Now let's see the sub, uh, subgroup analysis. Uh, for 75 patients who received chemotherapy, the median PFS was significantly higher for patients in the West Pearl group than that in the uh, West Pearl group uh, with a significant uh, difference. And for 70, uh, 37 patients treated with chemotherapy and bevacizumab, the median PFS was also significantly longer uh, in the West Good group than that in the West Pro group, with significant difference. Also, we did a Cox model test uh, to show that uh, the interaction between PFS and uh, has uh, significant uh, statistical statistic uh, after adjusting for after adjusting by treatment uh, gender smoking status uh, stage. Uh, by multivariate uh, analysis. And uh, let's see the discussion part. Uh, as we all know, as we all know, uh, Pimetrix is a third generation cytotoxic agent. It can inhibit cell replication and tumor growth by disrupting folate dependent normal cellular metabolism. Bevacizumab is a recombinant humanized monoclonal antibody that can bind vascular endothelial growth factor A, inhibit its binding to VEGF receptor 2, and inhibit the biological effects of VEGF. And therefore, Pimetrix platinum combined with bevacizumab has been the standard first-line chemotherapy regimen for advanced non-screamers, non cell lung cancer patients. However, some patients still showed poor response to pimetrix based regimens. And our study was the first study indicating that a blood-based protein signature might be a novel and valid method to predict the efficacy of pimetrix platinum or biosensomide in first-line treatment for Chinese lung endocarcinoma patients. And the survival results in our study were consistent with that reported in Paramount study and Point Break study. And the Paramount study uh, compared continuation pimetrix maintenance therapy with placebo for patients with advanced non screamers SCRC. And point break study um, is a phase three study comparing continuation pimetrix plus biocizumab maintenance therapy with placebo for these patients. Our study indicated that VS method is predictive uh, not only for patients received chemotherapy long, but also for patients received chemotherapy plus bevacizumab combined therapy. Although this study clearly identified patients who might have worse outcomes of on pimetrix based therapy, these data were not compelling enough to deny pimetrix therapy to VS poorer patients. However, perhaps in this with poor patients, alternative treatment approaches could be considered. Also, our study has some limitations. 
first, 72 patients were eligible for including and analysis, but only a small subtype of participants tested as VS poor. This limited the power of the analysis we performed. Second, OIS data were not available because OIS was typically not calculated, calculated until more than 50% of patients experience events. Median OIS was not reached in either group. And third, the sample number was small, so it was difficult to avoid selective bias. However, we took a series of measures to reduce bias, such as we compared the baseline characteristics in two groups, and we found that uh, these were balanced in two groups. And we used the Cox proportion hazard model to do to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, analysis uh, uh, Cox analysis and uh, found that uh, the uh, VS method uh, was an uh, uh, independent prognostic uh, factor. And the conclusions uh, is that our study indicated that VS might be considered a novel and valid method to predict the efficacy of pemetrix based therapy and identify a subset of advanced lung adenocarcinoma patients who had intrinsic resistance to pemetrix based regimens. However, larger sample studies are need, still needed to further confirm our results. And uh, we acknowledge all medical staff, uh, doctors, and nurses. Uh, for treating these patients. And that's all my content. Uh, thanks for your attention.